Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to look at seven things to look out for when deciding which camera you should buy for your cinematic videos. Now, it's not a good idea to just tell a videographer, go and buy this kind of a camera. You have to do some research for yourself. It will even help you to understand different types of camera. At the same time, it is also not a good idea to just tell a videographer, go and research. If you don't tell them what to look out for when they are doing that research. Now, I have some experience when it comes to buying and working with different cameras. Starting with my first camera, this JVC that you are seeing in the background, and coming all the way to the Red Raven Cinema cameras and everything in between. From my JVC camcorder, I used a few more camcorders until 2016, when I bought my first DSLR camera, which is this Canon 70D. I even did a short movie on the 70D, which won two awards actually. Then I upgraded to the 5D Mark III because it has got the bigger sensor and better quality more than the Canon 70D. But I quickly learned that it was more of a photo camera more than video because the videos didn't really look that cinematic. They had this DSLR look. So I bought the Blackmagic 2.5K. I shot with it for a couple of months. It had this film look that I love but it was eating up a lot of space. The camera was also heavy. And around that same time, people started also demanding for 4K videos. So I bought the Lumix GH4, which was really revolutionary in my career. Until today, I still use the Lumix GH4 in some scenarios. I shot a lot of projects on it, but the sensor was small. So I left it for the Sony A6400, which was really good for videos, but I really wanted a full frame. So I switched to the Sony a7 III, shot a couple of projects, but gave me some problems when it comes to color grading because it can only do 8-bit internally. And the highest frame rate it can do is 4K 30 frames per second. So I switched to the Lumix GH5, the one that I'm using to shoot this video right now, which has been my favorite camera of all time. It can shoot 10-bit internally, which is good for color grading and 4K video at 60 frames per second. And for the pictures, I upgraded to the 5D Mark IV. This is the one that I also use for my behind the scenes video. Then later, I upgraded to the EOS R. I also bought other cameras like the 7D at some point. So I have just been switching between these cameras. But when I have a high budget project, I usually hire the RAID Cinema camera. So you can see I have been down there trying to decide which camera to get. And now I'm going to give you my seven tips, seven tips to look out for when buying a camera. Number one is the image sensor. Again, the image sensor is part of the camera hardware that captures light and converts it into a picture or a video that we can see. Cameras have different sensor sizes. We have medium format sensors that are found in the Hasselblad H6D or Fujifilm GFX100. Then we have full frame sensors that are found in the Lumix S1H, Sony A1 or Canon R5. Then we have APS-C sensors that are found in cameras like the 70D. From there we have the micro four third sensors found in Lumix GH5 or Olympus cameras and so on. The size of the camera sensor determines the amount of light that is used to create an image. Larger sensors acquire more light than smaller sensors. Therefore, they produce a much better high quality image. If you have two cameras with the same amount of megapixels, but different sensor sizes, the one with the larger sensor will produce better videos because the individual pixels are much larger than on a small sensor. It will also give you a better dynamic range as well as depth of field and better low light performance. However, Sensor sizes do not really make a huge difference when it comes to videos, unless you really want so much shallow depth of field, or maybe you shoot mostly in low light conditions. The sad part, maybe even the worst side of full frame cameras, they will be more expensive than smaller sensor cameras. For example, despite the Lumix GH5 having better features like shooting in 10 bit and 4K videos at 60 frames per second, the Sony a7 III is still more expensive because of its larger sensor. So price is also a secondary thing to consider when you are deciding which camera to buy. Decide how much budget you want to spend on the camera and look for the cameras in that price range. The best option would be to look for used or second-hand cameras first before you buy a new camera. For example, if you want to buy the Lumix GH5, but your budget can only allow to buy a GH4, Instead of buying a brand new GH4, you can buy the Lumix GH5 at the same price or even lower. I have six GH5 cameras. I bought all of them secondhand on eBay and they all work perfectly fine. So don't even 
be afraid that, or maybe when I buy a second hand camera, it will not last long. Come on, cameras, they really do last. All right, the second thing to look out for when buying a camera or when deciding which camera you should buy is the resolution. The resolution of the camera is simply the size of the video in terms of width and height. Width and height. The current standard resolution is full HD 1920 by 1080. So if you can get a camera that can shoot in full HD, it's good resolution to start from. 4K on the other side, which is triple HD, is slowly becoming popular and it will soon be the standard within a few years. So if you can afford a 4K camera, I highly recommend you go for it because it's more like a future proof. By the time 4K becomes the standard, you already have a 4K footage, 4K camera. Just be aware that 4K footage will take too much space on your hard drives. It will be a bit harder to edit and clients won't even tell the difference between 4K and HD because they will still most likely to watch the videos in HD anyways. But I still think 4K video has more advantages than HD video. Even if you shoot in 4K and downsample the video to HD, the HD video will look far much better than the one that was shot straight in HD. And so many other advantages like reframing your footage without losing quality and stuff like that. All right, let's move on to tip number three, frame rate. Frame rate simply means the number of still images your camera can record per second. Frame rate is very important because it determines how smooth slow motion video your camera can shoot. The higher the frame rate, the slower smooth slow motion you have. For example, 50 or 60 frames per second will give you smooth slow motion video than 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. So I recommend that you get a camera that can shoot in full HD at least 50 or 60 frames per second. This is the reason why I left my Sony a7 III for the Lumix GH5 because it can record 4K at 60 frames per second. Number four is light sensitivity. Light sensitivity of a camera is the camera's ability to shoot in low light situations. Most of the camera's sensitivity to light has to do with the size of the sensor. However, some cameras have got a better denoising technology than others and you will know by its ISO number. Usually, the higher the ISO number in the camera, the better it will perform in low light situations without introducing so much noise to the image. Cameras that perform well in low light conditions are mostly Sony cameras because they have higher ISO numbers. So if you're kind of videography, will have a lot to shoot in low light conditions. Look among the Sony cameras, they'll give you the best image quality. All right, let's move on to the fifth thing to look out for when purchasing a camera, autofocus. A camera's autofocus system intelligently adjusts the camera's lens to obtain focus on the subject. Though I don't use autofocus for 95% of my projects, fast autofocus in a camera is extremely very important, especially if you are starting out as a videographer. It will make your shootings much easier as the camera will make sure that your subjects are in focus all the time. Canon cameras are known to have the best autofocus system on the market right now. So if autofocus is really a big deal for you, which I recommend if you are a beginner, Canon cameras are a better place to start looking from than Sony cameras and the rest are not reliable. All right, let's move on to number six, which is lens choice. A lens is slightly more important than the camera body itself, at least for me. And if you are buying a camera, you should consider the number of available lenses for that camera as well. At the moment, Canon has around 211 available lenses on the market, which makes them easy to find and have many cheaper options than any other manufacturers. However, you can use adapters to mount different lenses on different camera bodies. Like I'm using the Canon lens right now on the Lumix GH5 with the help of Vitrox Speed Booster. All right, the number seven thing to look out for is ease of use. Hmm. This is the camera's ergonomics how easy it is to use that camera, the shape of the camera, how it feels to hold, the buttons layout, the menu navigation layout, how heavy it is to carry around. Can it fit on a gimbal? Can I record everything internally without hooking an external recorder? Does the screen flip out? Is it easy to see or bright enough? All these can be some of the things that can contribute to how easy to use a camera. For example, I left my Blackmagic 2.5K for the Lumix GH4 because it was heavy and couldn't even fit on the gimbal properly. All right, so those are like the seven things that I feel like it is a must, you need to look out for them when you are deciding which camera to purchase. But then there are secondary things that you need to look out for. So let me just discuss a few of them. 
The first one is in-body image stabilization. That is the reason why I use the Lumix GH5. Even though you can use a gimbal, but just having the ability to pick up the camera and create smooth looking videos is very important. Then there is battery life, dual recording capability, 10-bit color depth, zebra lines, focus picking, waveform, histogram, easy to edit footage are all among the things to look out for when buying a camera. I hope this video has given you an in-depth knowledge about things to look out for when buying a camera. So make sure don't just rush to get in the shop and buy a camera just because you want to start videography. Make sure you look out for those things. And once you are satisfied, let's move on to the next chapter where we shall discuss camera settings in details. This is it. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.